This is the TRM Atom, and in 2024, it is still one of the most recommendable knives on the market, and I think it's TRM's best. So TRM Atom is a three ounce knife with about a three inch blade, or th sorry, three and a half inch blade, and TRM's signature blade stock, which comes in at about 90 thousandths. <clears throat> and maybe most impressively in 2024, this is a made in the USA, made in Massachusetts knife that comes in at 200 bucks. And for all the performance that I talk about, at 200 bucks, it is pretty hard to beat. And TRM first and foremost deserves kudos for not raising their prices like a lot of other knife companies could. When this came out in 2019 or 2020, you know, this was closer toward the higher end of the market. Um, you know, prices for Spydercos, Benchmades, things like that were a lot cheaper than they are now. Now, 200 bucks for a TRM Atom? is a pretty fantastic deal and these have never been more available as TRM has started to successfully ramp up their production. <clears throat> so let's go into this knife and why you should want one, why you should get one, and why you will probably love it if you get it. <clears throat> so again, this is the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. And we'll start with the blade here. This is, as is typical for TRM, a thin blade made of 20 CV steel. 20CV is a high edge retention, high corrosion resistant, resistance, relatively low toughness steel, and they grind it quite thin. They start with 90 thousandths on the blade spine, which is about the same as your Spyderco Delica or something like that, and then they have a relatively tall flat grind that comes down to a pretty thin edge. You know, I've said before about TRM, they don't grind their blades as thin as they possibly could, <clears throat> and... There are benefits to that. This thing will cut as well as you would ever possibly need it to. This will be one of the sliciest knives in your collection. And that is partially because of the edge. It does get thin behind the edge. And it's also because of this blade stock. Because as you're passing this knife through material, the fact that that blade stock is so thin means you're passing something much thinner through whatever you're cutting. So if you're cutting cardboard, if you're going through plant material, if you're doing you know chores around the home and things like that, Anything where you're not just using the edge of this blade, anything where you're passing that whole blade through material, the thinness of the Atom blade is a serious asset. Any thin blade is going to do that very well. And the fact that they use a relatively gradual flat grind and then they put a very good stone wash on there that knocks down this little plunge edge here, it's just, it ends up being a very effective little slicer. <clears throat> if they made this thinner, than they do behind the edge, which of course you can do with a sharpening or more aggressively or regrind. Uh, the edge would be a little bit more fragile. I mean, this blade, they could make this blade super, super thin if they wanted to. But with the thickness that they've got, it ends up being a very good balance between being as slicey as you ever need it to be, while still being a knife that you can push decently hard. Um, it's not going to be you know, I've had customs that are much slicier. I've had, you know, a couple of my Demcos have even been a little bit slicier out of the box, though you can always lay this edge back with a good sharpening. Um, but it is, it, the, the long and short of it, it's as slicey as you need it to be. Um, and probably slicier than you need it to be. And then you've got this blade shape, which is really good and sort of surprisingly good in my experience. So it's the exact same blade shape. As the neutral, here's your TRM neutral, just extended. And a lot of companies start to struggle a little bit, and we'll get it, we'll sort of preview some of the handle comments I've got here. A lot of these long, thin blade shapes <clears throat> can be a little bit difficult to use. Because this is a pretty traditional, this is actually almost a spear point more than a drop point, in the sense that you know your tip is directly aligned with the pivot here. And, I mean, it's a pretty symmetrical blade. The You've got a little bit more um, flat here before it turns to belly at the tip, but your overall blade grind is pretty symmetrical from the spine and, you know, the base of the handle here. You've got a pretty decent-sized choil at the base of your um, at the base of your blade here, which you can get, you know, it's a 50-50 choil, so half on the blade, half on the scale here, and you can get a full finger in there. You can pinch up right like that. <clears throat> and... This, you know, it's a very useful blade shape in the sense that this little bit of belly toward the tip and this long flat here 
function the same as a good draw point, and this will slice just enough through anything that you want. You can make long extended cuts with this. You can drag it through material. You can push it through material. Drop points work. Spear points work. And there's nothing exceptional about this grind in the sense of there's nothing unusual about the shape of the blade here. I like the fact that the tip is pretty neutral with your pivot here. It means that the tip is very easy to pierce into things, very easy to get that tip into something and then drag it through. Um, Whereas if that tip was a little bit higher, sometimes the tip can feel a little bit behind your hand. If the tip's a little bit lower, sometimes with big, long knives like this, worn cliffs, you, it gets sort of hard to locate that tip. So I like the fact that they just went with a pretty simple spear point design here. But the reason that this blade ends up being so useful and so easy to use and easier to use than a lot of, you know, long, skinny blades like this is where we start going into your handle ergonomics. So you've got a pretty decent choil here, and you've got a very neutral handle. This is pretty much flat here. There's a very subtle palm swell right behind the back there. And it curves down. I mean, the whole handle has a slight downward curve. And then you've got a pretty big palm swell here after what is on the show side scale, a decent sized choil, which is also your lock bar axis. And then it skinnies down towards some intentionally sharp corners down at the butt here. And when you combine that with this 50-50 choil, and it is a choil in the sense that you can see the scale, you know, does come down a little bit there. So your finger is really meant to slide in there. You can pinch this knife and when you naturally grip it with your front finger up in this choil, your thumb, you, you know, you get this whole knife right in the palm of your hand, your thumb can get pretty far up on that blade. And this is a way that I grip my TRM Atom quite a bit. And the whole thing is right there in my mitt. And my thumb is all the way up there. What does that mean? That means that my thumb is like an inch from the tip of the blade. Even though I got three and a half inches of blade here, I am basically on top of this blade and in control of the whole thing. And I can even choke up more than that. I can put my middle finger in this choil. And because this handle is so neutral, it slides very nicely on my hand. I got half the handle sticking out the back of my hand here, but I can just rest this part right on the sort of, right on the ridges of my knuckles here and pinch the blade just like that. And now I'm grabbing the blade. This is very much like a chef's knife grip. And I, again, I've got tons of control over this big, long blade. And at the same time, if I want to do a task where I want to, you know, use that full three and a half inches, I can absolutely grab it back here and it still works. It still fits nicely in the hand. And so now I've got three and a half inches of blade when I want tons of distance between my hand and the, and that edge right there. It's there if I want it. If I want to do, you know, my longer cuts, often when you're cutting, say, tons of cardboard, things like that, you want that full blade because you want to drag that whole blade through the material, pull it through, have, have, you know, have your cardboard start at the tip and go along to the belly or start at the bottom and go along to the tip. You know, do those long drag cuts. This, the way the handle and the blade interact in this design with the relatively simple neutral blade <clears throat> and a relatively simple neutral handle that also just puts its curves in the right places and the way that this choil lets you climb up on that blade i mean it's the same sort of thing that they do with the uh with the neutron you don't need it as much on the neutron because the neutron is a tiny blade but with the neutron you can do the same thing with the neutron you know this is a three inch knife that I can get all the way to the tip all day if I want to. And similarly, this is a knife that I can climb up or down the handle however I want to. It's one of the reasons that the Neutron is so good. You can do the same thing on the Atom, except it's a three and a half inch blade, which means you've got potentially even more utility because there are some tasks, you know, I'm doing my extended cutting chores. If I'm cutting through larger, thicker material, there are times that a three and a half inch blade feels a lot easier to use than a three inch blade. The knives are otherwise very similar. You're talking the pretty much, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, they're the exact same thickness. They're the exact same blade stock. I mean, they're basically the same knife, except the Atom is an extended neutron, but in this three and a half inch package, you get 
a lot of utility that you may not get in that three inch knife. And the other benefit of the way TRM designs their knives is when you fold it up, you still get a package that is absolutely tiny in the pocket relative to what you get. With the way they design this blade and the design this handle, and that's the benefit of a relatively thin blade like what they've got here, this blade folds up almost entirely within the handle. And so if I compare this to, you know, let me go with, I've got a couple of natives here. Um, oh, there's my PM2. If I go with the native, the native sticks out. I mean, it's not that big a deal, but it does stick out more in your pocket than the Atom. It's also thicker in your pocket than the Atom. That's the biggest difference. The Atom is super, the Atom's got thin blade stock, but it's super thin in the pocket. Let me bring out my PM2 here. So PM2, about the same blade size. Takes up more space in the pocket that way, but more importantly, takes up significantly more space in the pocket when you talk thickness. Now that doesn't look like that much, but you absolutely feel it. Because think about that, that thickness is applied to the entire size of this object in your pocket. So knives that get super thin on this dimension feel a lot smaller in the pocket than they quote unquote are, especially if you're used to coming from thicker knives. If you're used to carrying something like this in your pocket, then going to something like this feels like carrying nothing. And so the Atom, not only do you get three and a half inches of blade that is super useful because of the way the handle and the blade interact, but you get three and a half inches of blade that is very easy to carry because of how thin this overall profile and this whole knife is. Then, so let's actually, let's look at this, uh, let's look at this handle in a little bit more detail. So this here, these are their flat scales. Much like on the Neutron, I actually think the flat G10 scales are the best scales for the Atom because it's a little bit hard to see in these jade scales here, which are unfortunately the only scales I've got right now for this, or the only flat G10 scales I've got. I've got some other ones that I'm planning to sell. But you've got a nice even chamfer all the way around. You've got a peel ply texture on the top, so there is quite a bit of grip on this, and it's machined flat on the edges here. Now, one of the benefits of TRM, and they've really started to support this in the last year and a half or so, meaning there have been more scales available, is this scale swap. So with a TRM, rather than, you know, I've got aftermarket scales on my PM2 here. To change the scales on a PM2, you basically have to take the whole knife apart. And honestly, to do it right, you literally have to take the whole knife apart. And that's typical. Spyderco is not atypical there. That is what you have always had to do to change the scales on your knife. TRM instead set it up so you can basically remove just a couple screws and what you what will happen is these the liners which you can sort of see through the JG10 there will stay in place but these scales will pop right off and so you can take other scales and drop them right onto your atom. What that means is that you can make this knife look and feel the way you want it to look and feel. <clears throat> so I've got JG10 um, flat scales on here. The benefit of the flat scales is they do provide the most grip, the most traction. These flat edges give you places to catch your fingers. You know, they provide friction. They provide friction against torquing. They provide the most grip on the surface here. A flat scale like this with a peel ply texture, just like you can see on the Atom here, that little texture, same texture applied here. That texture is going to apply more grip to your hands, to your thumbs, to your fingers when you grip this knife and it's going to stop it from slipping out. From a pure utilitarian perspective, these flat G10 scales I think are the best. They put a nice little choil here, but those flat edges and these chamfers and the bit of sharpness there makes this as grippy as it will ever get in flat G10. They also happen to be the cheapest scales. Um, they're like 50 bucks, something like that. Um, they are making less and less of the flat scales. They're transitioning to only making contoured scales, which I don't think is necessarily the right move. But 
that's where the market is, you can get contour G10 scales. So contour G10 scales, rather than being flat across the top like this, they're going to be rounded. Sorry for rubbing the camera. They're going to be rounded the whole way. These edges, you know, let me show it on the uh, neutron here. So these edges will instead be rounded and it gets a lot thinner at the top and bottom edges. On the neutron, it gets a little fatter, meaning the contoured scales are thicker across the whole knife than the flat G10 scales. On the atom, the contoured scales are as thick as the flat G10 scales, even at their thickest, and then get thinner at the edges. The benefit of the contoured scales is they carry a little bit smaller in the pocket because the whole scale is a little bit smaller. You know, it's smaller at the top and bottom edges, and it's as thick here as your flat G10 scales, and it feels rounder in the hand. It's also a more complicated part to make, so they cost a little bit more money. The reason I don't love the contour scales on the Atom, though I like them better on the Atom than the Neutron, is you do lose a little bit of that grip. You get a knife that's a little bit more comfortable in the hand. You don't feel those sharp edges, but I like those sharp edges because they keep the knife in my hand, and they're not sharp enough that they're a problem. They're never uncomfortable. You just feel them, and they help you know where the light knife is located. With the contour scales, you lose some of that. You also lose most of the peel ply texture here. The way they machine the contour scales, it ends up being quite smooth here, which to me makes the knife a little bit more slippery. And then you can get um, you can get scales in carbon fiber, though I haven't seen those in stock in a little while. Um, or at least you can get fancy carbon fibers, you can get basic carbon fiber, you can get tech wood, which is a resin impregnated wood, you can get micarta, and then you can also get titanium. And you can turn this $200 knife into a $325 knife, if not maybe even more than that, if you want to get some of their textured titanium scales. I've had those scales, they're cool, they're interesting, but this knife starts to feel a little bit like less of a screaming goodbye when you start to go with titanium scales because what the titanium scales do is not only do they make it significantly more expensive but they also make it much heavier and the fact is as we'll go into in the fit and finish <clears throat> this is this is a knife that is as well made as it ne needs to be this isn't a knife that is made for screaming tight tolerances you know, you're not going to compare this to something from Spider Coast Thai Chung Factory. It's just not that tight. And so having big titanium scales on a $325 knife, it kind of feels like trying to soup up a Honda Civic, um, where it's just you're, you're strapping a bunch of things onto a chassis that isn't quite meant for that. So the titanium scales are cool. They're fun. But the long and short of that whole rant there is I think these flat G10 scales are probably your best bet for most people if you want to use your Atom. And they are really well done, but you've got that ability to swap those scales anytime you want to. Take these off, put whatever scales you want on, and frankly, a lot of Atom owners will change their scales all the time. It literally takes like three minutes. So you can have your Atom, you can have five or six sets of scales, and if you want to, you know, if you're like, hey, I feel like titanium today, boom, you throw titanium on there. Hey, I feel like tech wood today, boom, you throw tech wood on there. Whatever, it's nice. And it actually, in some ways, can help it feel like you've got different knives in your collection um, without actually buying different knives, just buying different scales. It's a very cool feature that TRM has. I love that they do it. Um, I take advantage of it very occasionally, but it's... Uh, I still think these scales are the best. A couple other details here. So this thumb stud. The thumb stud here, and then we'll talk about the action. Flat and domed on the top with a little lip here. And this lip will catch your thumb. And I find it catches your thumb very well. Some people didn't love this old thumb stud or don't love this old thumb stud. By the way, they've got new thumb studs on most of their knives. I talk about that in my shadow review. It's more of a sort of ziggurat style thumb stud. It's better in most of the ways, but I don't think this one is bad. The problems with it is because it's domed and flat on the top, your thumb can just skim right over. And if, I mean, if you've got really soft hands, then catching this little edge and using it can, you know, cause a little owie on your thumb. Not a big deal. These thumb studs, I have always found they are located very well. 
the place they're located with this choil here, your thumb naturally is guided into that spot, catches under them, and it pops right out. The detent is really good for what this is. This is another knife where the geometry of the thumb stud relative to the pivot does the detent a lot of favors. The detent is, it's not that light, but it's also not that heavy. And this is not a smooth knife in the way that like a well broken in, you know, um, not, not even a PM2, like a well broken in, I look at like my GB2. This is a smooth knife the whole way through. And I mean, it just feels like oil on glass. This is more of a, I mean, it's a utility sort of knife. It's, I'm feeling the friction the whole way opening, the whole way closing. And when I am opening it, I am overcoming that friction to get it to pop out. That makes the detent feel a little bit heavier than it actually is um, because you just end up applying a little bit more force to overcome it. But with where this thumb stud is placed, you, by the time you do overcome that detent, you're providing enough force to get the blade almost all the way around. So while you can really try, you know, if you want to slow roll it and you want to not have it pop out, you can do that. Anytime you're sincerely trying to open this knife, it's going to pop right out. It gives you a nice satisfying snap, a nice satisfying pop. The lock bar access is very good. One of the areas that the Atom is most sort of superior to the Neutron. Neutron here. One of the few complaints you could levy against it is that lock bar access is a little bit small. You know, it's a little bit hard to get in there. I've never had a problem with it, but I could see somebody with bigger thumbs having that issue. You got tons of lock bar access here, and it's a very good liner lock. I mean, you look at it, it's because that thin blade stock, but your liner lock is almost as thick as your blade stock, and it's super secure. Never had any lock up issues on any of my TRM liner locks. Feel secure when it's out. And it just ends up being a very nice poppy detent. Poppy is really the right term. It feels like a pop when you break that detent. You hear a pop when it comes out. And then closing it, it is, I mean, you're manually closing this the whole way. I could probably loosen this pivot and make it shake shut, but you're not really buying this for the action. You're buying this to be a really useful, really effective slicing machine for 200 bucks. You're not going to get one of those glassy actions like you get on, you know, a lot of knives that are really prioritizing action. This is prioritizing utility, prioritizing security. The blade has no play, not even a hint of play. Um, and honestly, I think it works with what this knife is trying to be. Just know it's not going to be as smooth as some of your higher end knives. It's not trying to be. And then pocket clip is fine. Act, we talked about action. I think that's most of what I've got to say about the TRM Atom. I mean, sort of my concluding thoughts, which is what I've gone through over and over in this review, is this is a fantastic user of a knife. The way this handle is made, the way this blade is made, the way the handle and the blade interact with each other, the smart decisions they've made about the choil, the palm swells, the shape of the blade, the grind, all of that. This is an extremely useful knife. This is a knife that you can carry in your pocket that takes up very little space, very little weight, gives you a ton of blade to work with, and all of that blade is actually useful. You get a lot of big knives out on the market that it's a little bit awkward or a little bit difficult to use the full length of the blade. This one here, I have never had a problem. This has never felt ungainly. I've never felt like the blade is getting away from me. And a lot of that just comes down to how this blade and how this handle is designed. The scale swap is a great feature. Um, most people are probably gonna settle on one or two sets of scales that they like and stick with those most of the time. But the fact that you have the option to vary that so quickly and so easily and then TRM makes a lot of the scales themselves is a great feature. And they're going to keep making more and better scales and it's really cool that if I wanna dress this up with some fancy fat carbon scales for a day and things like that, I can do that. And it's gonna cost me like a hundred bucks to even get their highest end scales, not kind of the titanium. The titanium are like 140 with the dragon skin pattern on it. But anyway, it's costing me 50 to 100 bucks to get most scales on here and it makes it feel like a very different knife it's just it's a well-designed well-made knife and then i'll come back to where i started which is the fact the trm 
is still making these in Massachusetts at the quality that they're making it. And the quality they're making it, this will be my last point. Tolerances are very good. They're not great. They're not trying to be. So I'll compare this to my Chapel here, which is like, which is, you know, Spyderco, Taichung, Taiwan, Spyderco's highest end factory. You can see everything on your chaparral is just a little bit tighter. The tolerances are just a little bit more snug on something like a chapel here. And that's not even going that high end. This is not try, you know, like you can see little gaps around the pivot here. These aren't criticisms. This is a $200 knife. Everything is as tight as it needs to be to be functional. Again, there's no play. The action is very consistent the whole way. It's not smooth. It's consistent. This, they are making this knife to the tolerances that they need to for every functional purpose. And I applaud them for that because that is how they get a made in Massachusetts knife with this blade grind, which is super effective. And these handle scales and a secure lock and good thumb studs and all of that for 200 bucks. And if they tried to tighten up the tolerances, that would inevitably lead to a price climb. And so know what you're getting with the TRM Atom. That's why I'm not as huge a fan of the titanium scales because I think they're trying to make what is not inherently a premium knife, what is inherently a user. They're trying to make it into something that it's not. Some people love them. It also makes it more handle heavy. I'm just not a huge fan of the titanium scales myself, but this is a great user knife. And the fact that it is still $200 or about 210 in 2024 is a screamingly good value if you care about made in the USA. And there are not too many knives in this price range and in this size range that I would consider better as day-to-day -day users. I mean, maybe if you take your Endura, which there's a lot of similarities in the blade shape between this and the Endura, these are pretty good competitors. And if you like the Endura, you like this handle design, you like this blade shape, you like that blade length, this is, the TRM Atom is not that much more expensive than the Endura. It's a little bit higher quality and it's made in the USA. So if you're familiar with this, you might like the Atom. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. The Atom is a highly recommendable knife. It'd be a highly recommendable knife at 250 or 300 bucks. At 200 bucks in 2024, if you like knives in this size range, just go get one. It'll slip right into your pocket. It'll be easy to use. If you want to change it up, you can change it up and you'll just be really, really happy with it. I think that this is TRM's best and most generally useful knife. The Neutron is fantastic, but when you go from the Neutron to the Atom, you're getting a lot more blade shape, you're getting an even better handle, and it's not that much bigger of a knife. It's not that much bigger in the pocket, and there are times where this extra blade length is very helpful. So I'll have a separate video on that, but if you want one TRM, I would say start with the Atom rather than starting with the Neutron, but they're both fantastic. And the Atom is just another example of how good TRM is and how good TRM continues to be. Lots of other companies have made a lot of knives since this one came out, but it's still one of the best in the market. Hope that was a good use of your time. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you again soon.